morning power of call. I'm glad you all, all are making have made it out here this fine, wonderful Monday morning. I love Mondays. We've talked about this before. We'll talk about it again. We'll talk about it every day. It's Monday. We'll talk about it every day that I feel like it's a Monday. I enjoy Mondays. I enjoy the new start of the week. I enjoy the idea of having a lot of time ahead of me to get stuff done, uh, which is funny because I work all the time. So Mondays aren't really real. Every day is a Monday for me, but I like the idea of Mondays. So I'm happy to be here with you guys this wonderful Monday morning. Now, um, before we dive into the content for today, I wanted to talk with you guys about some of the things we have coming up. We've got a copy review, a live copy review later this week on Thursday. I'll be submitting the links for you guys to put your submissions for your copy. The way I do this, if this is your first time in the copy campus or it's the first time you're hearing about this, the way this works is uh, I take five students and I, I select their copy at random. So, you know, 40, 50, 100, 300 people will submit their copy. And I'll do a random number generator and pick five at random and, and break those each of those down in great depth. I'll do it live. I'll do it on a call with everybody. We'll have an opportunity for everybody to learn, ask questions. There's a general Q&A at the end. As much as I would love to be able to review everyone's copy, and I did in like the first two weeks of the campus before we reached like thousands and thousands of people and it physically became impossible. It is mathematically impossible for me to review everyone's copy, but I like to review some people's copy in great depth and let everyone else learn from it. That's the best I can. I do it at the scale and it's it's been really effective and it's fun to, to share those insights with everybody. We have a good time on those calls. So hopefully you, you guys are able to make it out this Thursday. And I'll drop the details for that later this week. Um, later today should be releasing the, the AI course or, or a video for the AI course, a series of videos where I took and I launched a offer, a new front end offer from, from nothing to coming up with the idea, coming up with the title, doing the research creating the copy for the Facebook ads and landing page, all that stuff with AI and launching it and getting it to revenue within like, it was probably about 30 hours total um, between starting and getting that first sale in. Um, so that's like the first, like the first part of a full series, but I'll probably release that later today if I can get the edits put together for you guys. So we've got some fun things coming on today in the next few days to so keep your eyes on the announcements channel because things are going to be fun. Now on to the lesson, on to the reason why we're here. Today, we're going to be talking about momentum and how to keep momentum going. And we're going to do this. This is prompted by a student's submission or a student's question to the Ask Professor Andrew channel. So, again, if you're new to the campus and you haven't seen all this stuff, one of the things that I do is every single day, at some point in the day, I'll sit down and I'll answer all the questions that have been asked in the last 24 hours inside of the Ask Professor Andrew channel. I don't always get to all the questions that are asked in the different random channels or the gorilla off off topic, whatever, but I do get to every single question that is inside of the Ask Professor Andrew channel. And this is one of them. Um, and I like these kind of questions. I like going over these kinds of questions. So when he asked it, I, I gave him a, a quick answer. And then I told him that I would cover it in more depth today on the power of call, which I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen so we can all read it together. Uh, let's see, definitely do that. There we go. You guys should be able to see the comment here. Let's let's go let's go full screen so we can see it. There, that works. So I'll just read it out. This is from Connor. He said, "Hey Andrew, I'm struggling a bit. I know my why, which is what we talked about the other day, and I know my, and my goal. I do make progress and keep learning every day. Right now, I'm not. I, when I first saw saw Ari, I thought registered nurse, but no. He said, right now, I'm not really focused on my copywriting because I want to continue with creating my own social media marketing agency where I add it as a service." But I try to work on every next step every day. But my problem is the more I slowly accomplish more and more things from my checklist, the more I find it justifiable to maybe procrastinate work because I think to myself, I have accomplished so much already. Let me get a break and slowly lose momentum. And it's hard to keep up. For a couple of weeks, I went dark with from my friends, only focused on my work for one to two weeks and didn't do anything else. And now I started seeing them again. And I think that's a problem why I lose focus and momentum. Monday, I'll probably be more strict to myself and try to keep get my momentum back, but it's hard keeping it. Do you have any advice or was there a power-up call that teach us how to stay focused and keep momentum? I'm struggling and even though I feel like I've done something or lost uh, or a lot within a day, I still lay in bed at night and I'm angry at myself for taking too long breaks or procrastinating for a couple of hours. I waste a lot of hours each day that I could have spent more educating myself or do some work that will help me towards my SMMA. I do recognize that I do a lot of watching and educating on stuff, but I don't spend any or few time in doing. 
I feel like that's a sign of my loser syndrome when it comes to doing the hard things. I procrastinate a lot, but I can consume far too much. So there's a whole lot in this in this this comment in this question. And this is this is actually indicative of his results in life. When you're thinking, writing is a reflection of your thinking and your thinking is a reflection. Well, the, what you think has a lot to do with how you act and your actions create the world that you're in and your the world that you're in creates the pain or the desire that you currently experience. And this man's feeling quite a lot of pain because his actions are chaotic because his thoughts are right, chaotic. And I know that because I can read his chaotic writing. So that's one of the powers. That's why journaling is cool. People advocate journaling because it, it forces you to focus your thoughts and crystallize your thoughts. And we're reading this guy's comment right now. And it's very, very clear. Uh, it's very clear that you, that he is having some real convoluted thoughts as an individual but let's analyze it piece by piece. First off, he's talking about this SMMA stuff where he's trying to start a social media um, marketing agency, which is cool. And all. It's very close to what we teach as a copywriter. A lot of people say they're going to create a social media marketing agency because they want to avoid the work of actually learning how to write. I recommend you guys, I have nothing against you guys forming agencies. However, I do recommend you do at least a few projects with a few clients by yourself. So you get a feel for how everything works. That makes it much easier to scale. makes it much easier to bring on employees and direct them. Also, a lot of people do this because they're afraid of landing clients. And so they'll do this and say, oh, I'm starting a business and I'm paying this person to run my clients and stuff like that. When they are just too scared to do themselves. Usually you need a client before you have a business. It's much easier to build an SMMA when you already have a client who's willing to pay you as a freelancer. And then you just build the rest of it on top of that. That's when you bring in people to help you um, with different aspects of the business. That's where you bring in people in. So trying to start an SMMA right out of the gate is like trying to start your car from stop in third gear. You can do it, but you got to have some sort of special torque or something going on. It's not going to work for just about everybody. So that's the first, first little minor detail we got to get out of the way. So now let's talk about the procrastination and all that stuff. He says he has a why. He obviously doesn't have or hasn't sat down and felt the why. There's a difference between having a why on paper and feeling a why. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing for me to be like, oh, I want to make sure that I provide well for my family. And it's another thing to when I come into a difficult situation where I have the opportunity to go become lazy, sit on my phone or, or do a really, really hard piece of work that's going to improve my life. I can, there's a difference between on the piece of paper saying, I should probably do the hard thing to help my kids, which would probably help anyways. And there's a difference between doing that and saying, actually sitting there and thinking about a future where my kids are and myself are broke and they are hungry because we don't have enough food for basic necessities. That's one vision I can create in my mind that will force me to work. Or I can create a movie of my mind and my wife, of my family, and I might be taking my sons on some adventure in the backcountry of, like, you know, Canada or something like that to, like, hunt a moose. I can make a movie of that in my head, and it's compelling, and it moves me forward. And it gives me enough energy to defeat the, the cost of whatever hard task I'm supposed to be. And so I don't know if Connor has really sat down and thought about his why. And I don't know if when the time comes to procrastinate, he actually chooses to think about his why. That's that's one thing with the Connor I suggest. If you're watching this call today, Connor, I hope you, I really suggest you, you take keep that in mind. Um, but then he talks a lot about, again, I, I want to address almost everything in this call. There's a lot of freight ins in this in this comment that I want to make sure we, we take care of. But there's one core issue. We'll talk about that. But I want to address sort of the small things around that. So I, I want you guys to understand that when you have, a, it's not enough just to have on paper, a why it's you have to use that why to spark the energy you need to push forward through difficulty. But then he's talking about losing momentum. So he does some stuff and then he starts procrastinating. And the more he procrastinates, the harder it is. He has friends. When he spends time with his friends, he ends up not doing as much as he should. And then he says he does a lot of his time educating himself, not actually working. Um, instead of actually doing the work that's going to build his, his business or build his, his freelancing portfolio. Um, he just spends a lot of time educating. Let's talk about um, let's talk about why this happens and how to stop this. How you can maintain momentum. And I'll, this what's really helpful for me, or what's helpful for me in this process, it was when I learned why momentum is so hard to maintain as a human being. And I learned it when I was uh, I don't know I was in high school. I was maybe a sophomore in high school. Let's say I, I was a sophomore in high school. I was sitting in my physics or not my physics class. I was sitting in chemistry class. With this bald-headed guy named Mr. Moon, cool, the coolest name for a chemistry professor I think you could ever have was do, he was a doctor, so he was Doctor Mooney. It's the coolest, coolest name for a chemistry professor. Anyways, he was telling us about this thing called entropy. If you've heard about entropy, I want you to put a one in the chat. You guys are all young, intelligent people. You guys are going to school. 
If you have heard of the term entropy, I want you to put it in the chat. Now, the idea is that um, there's two different states of the world. There is order and there's disorder. There are things that are um, that are that are ordered. And then there's chaos, random dispersed things like order. Something that's order would be like a nice, perfectly like cornfield is an ordered thing. Like it's been forced into a, a pattern. It's been forced to be something productive. A disordered thing would be like a meadow, right? A wild meadow where it's just nature has just kind of come through. And it's just a bunch of random plants growing in random places. And it might still be beautiful in its own way, but it's it's random. There is some level of order in chaos, but um, there's two different states of things, order and chaos, right? And the thing is, the natural state of the universe is that it bleeds towards entropy. It bleeds towards chaos. It bleeds towards a lower state, right? If you want to re reach a higher state, you have to put energy into the system. And if you want to maintain that higher state, you have to maintain energy, right? So... For example, and I'm using the example of a cornfield because it's pretty easy for us all to imagine. If you want to turn a meadow into a cornfield, you have to plow the field. You have to um, make sure that you create little like hills and stuff. It's been a long time since I've done anything with corn. And I've never done anything with corn on an industrial scale, just small scale garden stuff. You need to plant the corn. You have to water the corn. You have to, and you have to weed, keep the weeds out. And you have to continually upkeep and make sure that it grows, protect it against wild animals. There's all these forces trying to destroy your cornfield. And you're fighting the, the forces by putting in your own human energy to keep it a cornfield. Because if you don't, if you just let go and stop growing, messing with the corn, the corn's going to die. And then all those weeds will come back and they'll grow up. And before you know it, it'll go back to entropy. It'll go back to chaos. That's how the entire world works on a chemical level. Like on an actual chemical level, that's how the world works. So everything it tends, but left to itself, is going to bleed into chaos and weakness, right? And a human being is much the same way. If you let put a human being and you let them act completely based on their short-term self-interest, based on the programming of the world, based on the influences of their friends, outside people, and all that stuff, they are naturally going to gravitate towards being overweight, lazy, fat, just chasing dopamine and, and stuck in the matrix. That's what a human being is just naturally going to slide into. If you want to move to a higher state as an individual, you have to invest the energy to move yourself up. However, if you take your foot off the gas, if you stop investing new energy each day into that, what's going to happen is you're going to naturally slide back. There's no staying still. You can't, nothing is cemented in stone. Even the pyramids, for example, right? They put a ton of human energy into building the pyramids. And slowly by slowly, it's taking, it's thousands, it's taking thousands and thousands of years, but it's being eroded. It's falling apart. And then eventually it'll just become the desert again. That's how the world works. Unless human beings like they are, maintain it, which they are currently doing. So if you are a human being and you're starting off down here, a normal, average, lazy human being who just sits around on your phone, watches stuff, hang out with your friends, laughs, laughs, ha, 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 path of least resistance, getting you average or mediocre results. If you want to reach this higher version of yourself, you have to invest the energy up there. And you have to realize as you do so each day, there are forces that are trying to drag you back down. And it's not even yourself. It's just nature, man. That's just the way nature works. It's an entropy. You got to fight entropy. You got to invest energy to fight entropy. I remember sitting in Mr. Mooney's class learning about this concept. I'm like, well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I can see that. And I remember being slightly pissed off about the idea. I was like, that is just what? We live in a world where like good things can't stay good. You have to continue. Like everything's going to eventually bleed to nothingness. Like how do you even defeat that? You're always going to have to invest more energy to get it to where, to where you want. Doesn't that work out? Like how can you even have enough energy? Like because of the conservation of energy, like how do you even have enough energy to do that? How do you find the energy to raise, to, to, to maintain order? I remember some, I got on like a philosophical deep dive sitting in the back of Mr. Mooney's classroom to figure this out. And it wasn't until I was an older man, an older man, it wasn't until years later that I actually figured out that there's a special thing about humans that we can do that no other, the, the nature can't do, right? That doesn't really exist outside of human beings and outside of our minds. You see, most animals, most people, they are extremely reliant on the law of, the conserv of conservation of energy. That energy cannot be created or can only can never be created or destroyed and only be changed. And as humans, we can change energy. We can change the different energy we have. We had, I had a guy ask about heartbreak. You can change that into massive motivation and use that energy to work harder. You can change happiness and sadness if you're that into that kind of stuff. I know people that are really good at doing that. They take something happy and turn immediately something sad. There's some weird people in this world that do that, but what I'm trying to say is that we have an ability that most human, most other animals or entities in this universe do not have, 
And that is we have magic. We have the ability to spark energy. We can create it, or at least we can tap into vast reservoirs of it. Because again, to move from a lower state to a higher state, you have to invest energy. You have to invest energy to fight against entropy so you can go to this higher state of order. And you have to continually do that forever. But what I'm trying to say is if you want to move up there, you have to get energy from somewhere. Now you have a certain amount of energy each day, but I'm going to tell you how you can spark more energy in your life. And I mentioned at the beginning of the call, obviously you need to cut out all the things that are stealing your energy and you take things like, you know, you waste like useless consumption of, of information out of there. You got to take useless consumption of social media and garbage and, and, and like all the things you guys know that are wasting your energy. There's a lot of things that you guys do to waste your energy. You got to cut those out. So you'll have more of this abundant resource. But whenever you are faced with a difficulty, whenever you start to feel entropy drag you down, you can do something to immediately destroy it. And that is you can, like I said earlier, you can think about your why. You can tap into this pool. There's a vast reservoir of energy inside of your brain. You can create it by just changing what you have inside of your mind. And you can instantly get enough energy to push forward whatever obstacle you have. Now, you can't just think of the, the cool thing like, oh, cool. Yeah. And it's just sit there. You have to take that thought, you have to take that idea and change it into an act in action. You have to transfer that thought into real action, into this real tangible world, because that's what pushes you up against entropy towards that dream state that you're trying to achieve. You have to fight against entropy. You have to fight against these forces that are dragging you down. And it's a constant battle. You can never stop. If you stop, you'll slowly slide back down. You have to find ways to identify. Now that you kind of know how the universe works, you'll start to identify times when entropy is starting to drag you down when this these forces of chaos are trying to drag you into nothingness and you have to realize that it's enough there's nothing you want down there there's nothing you want down there in chaos you have to decide to rise up and fight the forces of entropy you have to fight entropy i remember thinking that and i would say that to myself all the time as a teenager to fight entropy because i was like I, I was i wanted to be better be better like a bigger better version of myself right um, I remember like telling myself, you got to fight entropy. I made it like my little battle cry. And for you guys, it should be your battle cry. As you are working your way up, as you're learning how to become a expert copywriter, as you sit there and you study and you discover how human beings actually work, how to motivate them to make change, how to use your words to motivate them to make changes, take action, pay money to improve their lives. As you're learning how business works online, you're discovering the levers that you can pull to create massive profit in this world. You have to use this information and you have to, you have to actively, you have to realize that as you do this, so that there will be forces trying to stop you, right? Just because that's how nature is, that's how the universe is. You must fight against that. You must constantly invest energy day after day, minute after minute, hour by after hour, doing the things you know you should, no matter how non-fun they are at the time, you must find a way to spark the energy inside yourself to defeat entropy and move up to that higher state. You have to do this if you want to succeed. If not, you can give up to the fight of the universe um, like a lot of people do and just sit back and relax and watch Netflix and, and chill on social media and just enjoy your life. That's another option. You can either do that or you can constantly fight. You can live in a constant state of battle, but you know which one you were bred for. You know which one you were born to do. My friends, I want you all to understand this and keep these questions or keep this idea in your mind. You now know another chunk of how the universe works. And I want you to apply it. Now we got a few people who have submitted Rumble rants who paid some money to get a question from my face. So I'm going to read them and we're going to talk about them. So V. Carino said, uh, hello, professor, quick uh, question. I crafted my outreach template with nine variables. I'm 100% certain it has very po profitable, positive results. However, the whole process is very time consuming. Any advice to speed it up? Question, like if you are, like you say you are positive that it has, uh, it, it will have positive results. You don't know that until you tried that. If you try it and you do it for a week and you get positive results, it's probably going to worth the time and effort you put in. If you put, try it and you get zero results, then it might not be worth the time and effort you put in. It's not so much that something is high effort or high difficulty. It's that it has the ROI on the back end. And you, right now, you don't know if it has the ROI because you haven't tested it. I recommend you test it. And once you know that if it's working or not, then you can, you can continue to invest the amount of energy you need to make it happen because the result is worth it. Um, if you are using nine variables over time you're, and you're looking for those for every business over time, you're going to find those a lot easier. You're going to create them a lot easier. Um, it just depends on your ability to practice it. And, and that all that is going to depend on whether or not you get the results. So speeding it up doesn't really matter if you're getting the results. Speeding it up is going to happen naturally as you continue to practice and study and get better at identifying the answers to those variables that you're asking yourself as you look at a business. So 
good question though. Uh, we have another one here. Let's see if I can scroll through this. Super chats down to, there we go. Nope, there it is. All right, someone said for a, so Ammon's Blade, uh, for a prospect's or a product email, should we focus on either pain or desire for the entire sequence or switch it up between each email? Uh, let's like it's a three one ratio for sales. Also, um, I'm doing a whole series with the AI you built question mark. Okay. Yeah. So am I doing, so first thing, um, you can switch between pain and desire. It really, most people, most audiences are going to have a primary driver. There will be either a pain, a people, person that moves towards pain away from pain, which is most common for most people, or they will be a person who moves toward desire. You should use both. Even with people that move away from pain, you've got to give them a desire as well. Even for people who move away or move towards pleasure, you have to give them pain as well. So you should switch it up. There's not really a ratio. You're going to have to use your copywriting gut on that one. And he asked if I'm doing a whole series of the AI unit, the AI you built. Um, yeah, so I'm going to continue to give you guys AI lessons. I created a business, an info product business within 24 hours and had revenue within 30 for a um, with AI. And I'm going to continue to use that. I showed you guys, I showed you guys how I built the Facebook ads, like literally how I set up the Facebook ads, literally how I built the website and click funnels, like everything. So I'm going to upload that, which can help answer a lot of you guys' questions about how these things all hook together. Like, okay, I know where the words are, but how does the actual underlying engine of the thing work? Here's one, I'm going to give you guys one example of that. Now I said I got to revenue. I did not get to profitable revenue, right? Like I think the price of the product was like $29 and I spent like, I think a little over a hundred dollars for that first sale, right? Which is not crazy. Like that's, um, that's not too expensive. Obviously I need to dial the ad in and obviously I need to dial the website in. That's the next stage of all copywriting, right? You have your first version, your shippable version, and then you have the testing phase. And then I haven't really shown you guys how to do the testing phase and I can do so now with this product. So I'm going to take you guys through that. I'm going to use AI a little bit on that, but as far as like the conversion optimization stuff that I'll be doing to get that to profitable revenue, that is going to be a lot of my brain stuff, which is something that uh, is going to be fun for you guys to see. So I'll be doing that. I have more content on AI and I'll continue to release it. Um, AI is changing everything. If you're not using AI as I teach inside of the course, you're going to run into some issues. If you're in the bootcamp, just finish the bootcamp, learn how to do the bootcamp manually. And then it's going to help you be able to use AI intelligently. If you just step into the AI portion of things, you won't have enough copywriting intelligence to be the person who can drive AI intelligently. And you'll lose against any guy who has higher IQ who is then driving that the AI. AI is only as good as the person who is driving it. So you need to learn how to be a better driver so you can drive AI better. So that should answer your question. I'm excited to release that information for you guys. It should be a lot of fun. I'm constantly creating new stuff for you guys. I've realized that entropy affects me and affects you and affects the entire campus. It's up to me to inject constantly new energy into the campus so you guys continue to increase. You guys can also help with this and inject new energy into the campus and help me push this from entropy towards order, from this lower state to a higher state. There's always an energy cost as you move up. So I recommend you guys um, take this information, use this, these ideas of energy and entropy and look at your own life and your own copywriting journey through this. Uh, look at your physical fitness through this. Look at the relationship through this. this. This is a universal law that applies to all entities inside of this wonderful universe we call home. So take, take a look at it. Think about it. Figure out how you can apply these principles and how it can inform your actions so that you can move from a lower state to a higher state. You can find the forces that are constantly dragging you down and you can maintain a wonderful and build a wonderful, enjoyable life. My friends, it's been a good call. It's been fun to talk to you guys. I look forward to talking to you guys again later today for some of you, later tomorrow for everyone else. It's been a good call. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.